Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hope everyone's keeping safe and obviously getting out more. Now we're getting a bit more freedom. So today I wanted to do an update on my King Camphor flower horn. Um, as you remember, I think I got him just nearly four weeks ago now. And I said I'd do a, a, like a monthly video on this guy. So uh, I'm gonna do a video today. I'm gonna talk to you about how I care for him. Uh, what kind of foods I'm feeding him and that kind of stuff. So, um, as you can remember, I said I got it from Brian Johnson Cichlids um, nearly four weeks ago, I think it's a couple of days or four weeks. And when he travelled at the first place, obviously um, his cock had, KLK had shrunk a little bit and um, I'd, pop, I'd put things in place for him, you know, initially, just in case he was nervous and things like that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pan you around to him now, guys, and I'm going to talk to you like a little bit about the stuff that I've said around his uh, caring for him and, and that kind of thing, okay? Just give me a second. So, as you can see, uh, first thing, I've took the pot out. So, the reason I put the pot in there in the first place was I wanted to give him a bit of security, not knowing how he would obviously make the trip and how he would settle into the new tank. I've had flower horns before that have been quite nervous at first and hidden, but I've also had flower horns that being dead confident, and this guy was a confident one. He's never once used the pot, so I thought there's no point in the pot being there because it's just extra space it's taking up, so I took the pot out and he's fine with it. When I set a tank up for a flower horn, guys, I tend to do it like this, and it a lot of people would say to me it looks boring, but for me, this you know this this tank isn't for about what the tank looks like. This is for the for the flower on, so you know as much room as possible to swim, and no objects in there because he does he does dart, and do you know what? If he's darting into things and and stuff, he's going to get injuries. So it's better to be safe than sorry. And I stick the filter pipe and the heater pipe over here, as you can see in this corner. So I'll try and keep it as tidy as possible so there's nothing that he can um, bang his head on or anything like that. Um, so, like I said to you, when he came in transit, his KOK or his cock or whatever you want to call it, nuchal hump, had shrunk and as you can see, back, it's gone back to normal. It's not a massive KOK, which I'm happy about, but there's a little bit of a nice little nuchal hump on him. Um, and like I say, he settled in absolutely brilliantly. Um, and firstly, what, what do I feed him? So I feed him on Ikari Sickly Gold Pellets, uh, Excalibur Intense, Intense, Intense Red Pellets, uh, Fluval Bug Bites and Spirulina Pellets. That's his, pretty much his diet. Um, mix it up a little bit, but I do give him Spirulina Pellets daily. Um, just helps with his pearling. I mean, the guy doesn't need help with his pearling, to be honest with you guys. His pearling is unbelievable, but I just want to try and, on his on his KOK, I don't know if you can see at the front of that, and he had to get him to turn around a little bit, but at the front of his KOK, there's some pearls that have not come out and coloured up yet, so I just want to work on that. I think I showed you that in the last video anyway. Um, so yeah, the food's a really good balanced diet, really good for the reds in him and all the other colours. The Akari is sickly gold. Pulls out the colours, the intense red brings out the red. Um, and you know what guys, the red in his fins since I've been, in just four weeks and since I've been using it, has changed so much. And it's so vibrant in those fins and I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. But it's intense, it's beautiful honestly. Um, I've currently got the temperature at dead on 80 degrees. You know, and I think it's debatable how hot or uh, what temp you should have the water is because you know some guys have it over 80 degrees some guys have it around 80 degrees i know people have it around late 70s but you know i set this at 80 and the fish is fine so i'm okay to leave it at 80. um if the fish wasn't fine he would be stressed and we would see things like new gump shrinking those kind of things and color going um, and he would be untoward but no, he's not. He's very confident and he's and he's loving his life. Um, I also, um, obviously, you know, I don't do it enough, if I'm honest with you, but you, I do put a mirror in 20 minutes. I'm supposed to do it every day, but I don't. He's not really taken to it. He has a little look at it, but he doesn't really 
do much with it but I'll keep trying uh, and that's part of grooming him so it's great to groom these guys you know bring the colours out bring the the aggression out and that kind of stuff because then you see the best in the fish it's not just about the food it's also about the grooming um, and you know that's how you bring the best out in this fish in these fish in these flower arms uh, like I said I got it from Brian Johnston Cichlids who's based in Scotland and ships flower arms all over the UK um, and I've seen some beautiful flower arms going out lately from Brian um, he is probably the best and uh, not probably definitely the best in the UK um, he's a king camphor you know there's a lot of names for flower arms these days and I think people are adding names but King Camphor is a, a popular one and it's something that's been around a bit longer but yeah he's a King Camphor um, been told he's an F2 King Camphor which is obviously the, the line from obviously the natural parents which he's the second line from them um, yeah and I can say he's doing great guys we call him Bosco that's his name Bosco and he's around 78 inches um, He's got a good balance really because he doesn't bite me so I can put my hand in the tank but yet you can see he's got a bit of aggression, he's got a confidence about him. Um, but yeah that's the basics really when you're keeping flower horns. I mean I always keep them on their own, some people will put them with tank mates but I don't think it's worth the risk. You know he's currently in this tank and it's not forever home. You know I think I'd have to, I'm going to have to go and I've said on my last video, keep repeating myself don't know, that I'm going to have to go to a, a Rio 350 for him I think eventually because he could be a big guy, so we'll just upgrade that when we're ready. We're not ready. We're not ready for an upgrade yet. He's still got a bit of time left in this tank. Um, I tend to put either a blue background or a black background on just to try and enhance his colours. I've got a blue one on this. Sometimes I would, I have, I have put black with black gravel, that kind of thing. But I think, you know, this was what was already in the tank, so I've left it to see how he does. And you know, if I don't see that colour get more intense I might try different things like background darker background darker substrate that kind of thing um, but yeah he's um, absolutely settled in brilliantly guys and this is month one, month one update on him um, and it's all going well and I'm really happy with him you know really happy becoming the wet pet of the family you know he's in our living room so he gets a lot of traffic a lot of people get to see him and everybody who's seen him so far has commented on him. Um, so yeah, and that's it guys. I think I've covered everything. Uh, hopefully I've not forgot anything, you know, and it's just the basics of keeping flower horns, guys. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Big shout out to all my subscribers and a big shout out to anybody that's wa that watches my videos. Absolutely appreciate it 100%. And that's it guys. I'll see you on the next video.